Fantastic message by Dan Cassetta, as always, perennial champion in our business. I'm excited to be here with you guys today uh, to share some thoughts on driving sales weeks. Uh, when I received the message from Trent asking if I was willing to give this message at SLC, I was super excited. It's actually something I'm very passionate about. I've got a lot of stuff to go through, and I'm going to go through real quick, so I would definitely recommend having pen and paper ready to go. One of my favorite quotes by Oprah Winfrey states, Create the highest, grandest vision for yourself possible for your life because you become what you believe. It's a very simple quote that resonates very deeply for me in, in every aspect of life. And I think about in this business, it has so much power. And if you reworded it and said, create the highest, grandest vision for yourself possible as a leader because you become as great of a leader as you believe you can be. Create the highest, grandest vision for yourself possible as a business owner because your business will only become as big as you believe it will be. Create the highest, grandest vision possible for your people because they become as great of a leader as they believe they can be. And I think about a lot of the stuff that Dan just mentioned goes right into that, but for us, the environment that we create for our people, the belief that we pour into our people but really, a lot of it starts with us and what we believe is possible. And he talked about, you know, getting rid of the limitations and, and we question ourselves. There's so many things that hold us back that are internal. And I know in, in my business in 2005, it was right after this event that I had the opportunity to go cross train. And it was a simple question. I remember I was talking about Dan and some of the other greats in the business back then. I said, man, you know, and I, I was talking to Ryan Casey. I said, do you think two years from now I could hit a million dollars? And he looked at me and he said, why not next year? It's like, well, I mean, I, I don't have like all the layers, you know, like I'm, I'm a newer manager. It's, it's my second. It was really the end of my first full year. And they were all the, well, well I can't because of this or that and the excuses in my head. And he looked at me, he said, we run the same business. If you have a goal, Figure out what you want to do. What's the number? It's a million bucks, okay? Most of it's going to be new business. Let's call it 800. How many recruits do you need for the year? What does it break down for campaign? And commit to the actions of what it's going to take to get that done. And I remember that shift. My mind just shifted. It was like, oh my gosh, okay, I can do that. You know, and I had a plan in place, and I went after it. And it was awesome that year uh, to hit a million bucks. But a lot of it was in my head where I didn't, I didn't believe that was possible before. I thought it was going to take longer to build. And I challenge you guys, yesterday, phenomenal messages uh, on, on PRs and creating touches uh, from Dane. Uh, Mike Abramo is absolutely I thought crushed it, uh, crushed it uh, during his message and just so many great things that we can implement immediately uh, to impact our business. And I really challenge you guys, uh, that's step one, you know. Uh, once we have that, I'm going to talk about uh, today uh, what we, two, two main parts of my message, what our people need and tools we can utilize as managers uh, to really drive killer sales week. But again, driving the sales week begins, first it begins with us and what we feel is possible for ourselves and for our people. Some of you guys, as we go through this, might feel some of this stuff is pretty simple. And I, I'll tell you right now, even though some of the veterans in the room, these are some simple reminders, it's sometimes those basic simple things that we stop doing that can totally change the needle and take us back where we want to be. So I encourage you guys to take tons of notes because it can go a very long way. Also, for those of you who have been here uh, for five plus years, you know, and the veterans in the business who have heard many of these messages, I, I really encourage you guys to take notes to re-give this to your staffs. I know many times it's easy to sit and, and think, oh, I already know this. And, and I heard someone last week, I was at a, a, a mastery event, and they said, you know, it's, it's what you learn after you know everything that matters. And I just, and I thought about that. And it's like, you know, so many times we're like, oh, we know everything. And we really limit ourselves from what we can achieve at the next level, what we can learn at the next level. And I really want to encourage you guys uh, to listen with an open mind and looking for those couple things we can really put into action. So our representatives, uh, this summer, I spoke to several veteran managers from across the nation, as well as some of the guys in my office. And I, I remember people asking like, oh, I have these fast starters, you know, going out, going big, and then they're not doing anything. I just don't get it. I don't know what to do. You know, I had this person and I had this question come up from multiple different people. Uh, and as I, as I dove in with them, you know, one, if not two, 
Or you, in some cases, all three of these things were missing uh, post-fast start. And it's so important that once someone's done with their fast start, that they're able to, that this happens so that we can really create a plan for them long term. I think fast start's pretty easy. My message today is not fast start uh, business, uh, but a lot of the principles uh, happen all the way through. When you develop the right habits from the beginning, they carry those throughout their career. So... I want to talk about vision, and um, we can start with vision here. And I think about for yourself, do you know what you're building for your organization, right? Have you identified that? Uh, these are two things that we have in our office. Uh, one is our mission statement. This is read at the end of every team meeting. And this is something that we share with our team. Some of you guys have heard me speak before and I've shared this, uh, but create your own mission statement. You know, if you want to steal it, some of this I remember stealing from Carl Gedris years ago, uh, probably a decade ago, and then added my own spin on it. And it's been something that's gone through from South Florida now over to Texas. And we said, we, the West Houston Warriors, are a passionate, motivated group of leaders who embody excellence, integrity, and honor. We are focused on developing a team of young professionals that seeks to become the best version of themselves. This team will hold each other are accountable to create moments of action within moments of opportunity to turn obstacles into opportunities for growth and to constantly strive and achieve what others perceive to be impossible we call we close we conquer we are a force we are a family we are west houston and and i think about for you what is your organization about right you've heard messages jan you know dan just touched on some of this but for your people what are you providing for them what's the experience what's the environment what's there have you identified what you want your office to be about right what does it look like what's your organizational chart this was something our region had made i know many of us have made our own versions of this, but having something you're talking about all the time, about what you're building, where you're going, uh, and, and who, what positions you have available, and things they can get excited about uh, to go after. So making sure that through interviews, team meetings, trainings, PCs, really anytime possible, you're sharing where your organization's going and the mission of, of, that, of your office. So make sure that's happening. Uh, second, do you know what they want personally and professionally? What's their dream job, right? In, in Southwest region, our manual, the last page, and I'm not sure if all have adopted it, but there's a, a dreams list exercise, right? Some of you guys in this room were in 2006 when Matthew Kelly spoke about Dream Manager. Uh, if you haven't, I challenge you to pick up the book, The Dream Manager, all right? It'll take you an hour to read. It's a simple, quick read that's so powerful and really talks about when people have a vision as to what they want and they see how this vehicle can get them to the future they want, they're there. They want to be there. They want to learn from you, whatever you say. And it, it's a story, you know, of a janitorial cleaning service and everybody wanted to go work this place and clean toilets, right? And it wasn't that they were so passionate about going and cleaning toilets, but they were excited about what that company was doing for people, how that company was helping people hit their goals, buy their dream house, go on a dream vacation, whatever it was. And so I think about for you, why are your people working? If you had to look at your roster right now for your office, and I said to you, tell me about each person and why they're working. And what's their dream job? Could you answer that question? Some of the DMs I spoke to were like, well, I don't really know. Like that's something important to know because that's gonna drive them and that's gonna give them vision within this organization because you're able to tie in all the things we have and how it's gonna help them for their future. Many times as managers, and I remember being a new manager uh, and I remember running my office in 2003, 2004, and I'm like, we're gonna do this. And, and it was all about what I wanted to do, what I was excited about. And, and I remember some people were like, cool and some people just didn't really care you know and and it really that changed and when I really started focusing and understanding that okay we had our team goal and I always have things that I promote because there are those people who get excited about being part of something bigger than themselves right and there's people who are really stoked about that but there, there are those kids who don't care but when they know you care about them and you're helping them get to where they want to go. It's amazing. So you'll see that. And so what I found was, okay, I know we've all heard this and we know this, but there really is a power in that when you're helping all your individuals succeed and hit their personal goals, you will hit your goals. 
You will always hit your goals. If you're really focused on helping your people get the most out of their time with you, making most of their opportunity. So I challenge you guys, definitely when you're getting back, and we'll talk about with accountability, you know, set aside time to just talk to them and say, so dude, what's your dream? Like, I, I just ask them that. Like, we'll be talking about, what's your dream job? What are you working towards? What do you want in the game? What do you want to learn? Like, while you're here, Cutco Vector is the most incredible vehicle to lay a foundation for your future in so many different ways. What is it that you're excited about? What do you want to do? What kind of skills do you need? And we sit down and talk about that. So make sure you guys, and it doesn't matter if you do it right when they start their fast start, uh, in the middle of their fast start, or right at the end, but just make sure once they're fast start, I think that's an easy thing to promote the first week, right? Get off to a fast start, get off to a fast start, hit as many promotions. You can, you can get by with that. But post fast start, why are they going to keep working? What is it that they want to do? They're going to have tough weeks. They're going to need encouragement. They're going to need to be refocused. And so it's important that us as leaders, that we know uh, what they're working towards and what they're doing. Have you created a vision once you know what they want long-term for themselves outside of Cutco? Do they know all the things that they can gain within our company to add to their resume? Do they know all the things that are going to help them stand out? That's something we talk about all the time in our office is how are you helping yourself stand out? What are you putting on your resume? You know, consistency club, dirty, and we go through these things and recognize all of our people, but our goal is to help people stand out. Our goal is for our guys to have opportunities. I'm like, I want you to create the best opportunities possible within Vector and outside of Kako as well. All right, I want you to, to, to know what we offer and to know that when companies see, oh, this person was an All-American, to say you were top 50 out of, you know, 40,000. One of my guys didn't get their stuff in, but we had four people earn a scholarship this summer from my office, you know, and more from our division. And, and looking at our winners, looking at people uh, that are going out, that are going after it, they, they, it's something that they shared. I always talk about that. I said it's just, and it's all about consistency. And we'll talk about planning with them, but I think about when I know somebody wants to stand out, their dream job is to have their own pharmaceutical company, what, whatever it is. I'm like, hey, have you heard about Branch? That's to everybody. Have you heard about our entrepreneurship internship? It's ridiculous. It's one, it, it is the best way to learn how to lay a foundation to start a company. And whether you have your own tutoring company, you're a pharmaceutical sales rep, you want to be, whatever you want to do, knowing how to operate a business, knowing how to run a company, knowing how to start up your own business is phenomenal to have. It is the best business class you will take, period. How cool would it be to be able to get into that program and in a year's time through training and then going out and running your own office, basically have a master's in entrepreneurship and not just in theory, but something that's been applied and has been done. And the confidence you're going to have of knowing what it really takes to get a business going. Have you talked about with that? Have you, and, and map stuff out. So once I know those things, it's like, okay, what's it going to take? If it's a scholarship, I'm like, if you, they want to guarantee it, and we break it down. You know, in the summer, I'm like, if you want to guarantee, like 100% you're winning a scholarship, 50K. You know, in the fall and spring, if you want to guarantee a scholarship, 25K. Can you win it on less? Yeah, all right, but we don't always know what the lower numbers are going to be. But in my time in Cutco, I haven't seen somebody sell 50K in a summer and not win a scholarship yet. You know, I haven't seen somebody sell 25K in a fall. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I can't remember ever seeing that on the reports. I always look at that. So I think about 25K, I'm like, all right, cool, we've got 16 weeks. What does that take over 16 weeks? And when you break it down, it's not that much. If you have somebody who's consistently completing, you know, seven to nine Mac demos every single week, they're going to win a scholarship. You know, and it's like breaking the numbers down for them. And it's like, okay, so we've got 16 weeks, 25K. Let's split that up. All right, it's 1650, you know, whatever the number is. And looking at their average, okay, $400 average order, that's four sales. So you want to make sure you are completing seven demos, do or die every When do we, okay, I can do demos Tuesdays and Saturday. I'm like, pick two days to do four plus demos. Just pick two days. I like them during the school year to do less demos. And we're going to talk about that with having them set up, but having less demo days. So more demos on less days than spreading it out. I think it's a lot easier for them, especially uh, when they're in school. But even in the summer, and this was something I learned uh, from Donald years ago, and it helped us crush uh, 2008 uh, when we went after 
you know, that summer we did 1.1 mil, and it was uh, in a brand new territory. And, and remember, Justin telling me, he's a like, cat, drive fast, start, and then make sure everyone has a normal schedule for the rest of the summer. Now, was it going to be normal? No, we know we had push periods. We know we had stuff, but it was like, hey, if it's non-push, which is like the whole two weeks, this is the normal schedule. Uh, during push, I'm going to ask, can you squeeze in an extra three to five demos per week? And we are going to be looking for the, those all-stars who will be our starting lineup and help us drive it to the next level. All right? And last year, I gave a fast uh, push week talk that you can check out, and there's a lot of great stuff on that as well. But making sure, because once you know exactly what they want, you can make that proper plan to help them attain it. All right. And guys, I really do believe that everyone who walks through our doors like wants to succeed. They just might not necessarily know how to get there. And so it's our responsibility to help them make a plan so they can get to where they want to be. All right. So that leads me to uh, our second part here is, are people set up for success, right? We want to make sure that they're set up, that we plan things out with them so that they can go out and see the results that they wanted to. So first thing is, have you broken down their numbers? and show them what's gonna take uh, to hit their goal. And guys, again, it's so wild because when you break it down, it's really not that hard to perform at big levels. It's about consistency, all right? It's about having structure and consistency and accountability, all right? That's what it takes for somebody to succeed. So for them, you wanna break it down. So I know, okay, this rep's gotta do seven demos. So do we have a detailed schedule? Because by the way, seven demos, is that a lot? Not really. Does it sound like a lot to them? Not really. But if they don't have it planned out exactly what it looks like and when those phone times are, does it happen? No. All right, it doesn't because they have this and they have a project and it's just, it's mismanagement of time. One of the greatest things I learned in Vector was time management. I became really good at it early on, but I was horrible with it in my first two years of college. And, and working as a sales representative, I really learned how to fit it all in, how to get it all done. Do they have the detailed schedule that manages family, school, work? Does it include when they're doing their demos, when they're making calls? So this is something that I recommend you guys to do. Does not matter what your office schedule is. That doesn't matter. You can talk with your managers about that. But can you make a pre-made schedule? In my office, and this has changed so many times over the past you know, 15 years, but in my office, we have a pre-made schedule. And every campaign, you know, it's different in the summer than it is uh, in the fall and spring. But we have in there, you know, we have blocked off Sunday night phone time. And we have, you know, see, and this is an old one. This isn't even our schedule this fall. Uh, Wednesday, you know, we had Wednesday night team meeting. I just, I had it blocked off. Thursday, Moneymaker Phone Jam was just blocked off. And so things were in there. Champions Club was in there in the morning, you know, morning check-in, whatever it is. Why did we have that? I didn't, I never wanted them to miss Sunday evening phone jam to load up their week. I never wanted them to miss, you know, Thursday night phone jam to make sure their weekend. I didn't, I didn't want them to book a demo on Wednesday night uh, because they forgot there's a team meeting. Everyone with me? So their first week, we're in their manual, we map it out with them, but when they come to advanced training, we give them a, a schedule sheet so they know, hey, moving forward, this is what we use. If you wanna buy a planner, that's cool. You just, I need to make sure, I need to see it, that all of this is in there. Because what I never want is to be like, oh, I totally forgot that we have this. It happens every week, it will happen every week for the next eight months. So making sure that they know that doesn't change. So there's not, oh, I didn't know that we had that. So when, again, the more structure you have, the easier it is for your people to succeed. Set them up for success, all right? So you've got your schedule, so it's pre-made, plug everything in they have going on, plan out school, and obviously adjust as needed. You know, maybe there's somebody, one of my girls uh, was, uh, you know, Seventh-day Adventist, Sarah Law was Orthodox Jew. They didn't work from Friday night to Saturday night, right, sunset to sunset. So Thursday nights were not a thing for her. That was a demo night for her, okay? So her big phone jams were Wednesday, and she'd actually start making some calls, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday morning to make sure her Thursday was packed and Friday until she had to go help mom cook you know, for Shab Shabbat. So whatever it is, you want to make sure that they have it adjusted for them. What does their attack list look like, okay? The goal is to always have 100 names and numbers, all right, so they can get their basics down so it's continually growing. And, and guys, the last thing is, are their fundamentals down? And some of the guys were at my table last night. I emailed them. Uh, I have different 
recorded uh, messages, talks, coaching sessions, uh, things with representatives on, on YouTube channels. And I, I'd sent them, I have a how to skills check. And I think that it's one of the most powerful things when you really know how to skills check somebody and they understand the whys but behind having their closing down and their recommendations. You know, are your people set up so they're always, they have confidence in recommendations. They're always getting tons of recommendations. That's really important. One of my scholarship winners this summer, you know, when he started off, he wasn't getting any recommendations. He had a really crappy fast start. And he's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm not getting people just, I got the, I got it. And finally he got it. He's like, oh, I got it down, you know, whatever. I remember him saying, I'm like, you don't even have it down. Then he got it down, but he, he didn't have confidence and he wasn't really expecting it. And when he asked me for it, I said, Billy, your demeanor completely changes. You're like a different person when you're asking for recommendations. I wouldn't give you recs either. You, you seem really weird right now. You were like so nice and outgoing and so fun in your demo. And then you like warped in this other human asking me for recs. I'm like, yeah, something just happened. I'm not comfortable. I'm not giving you people. Uh, and I was like, dude, you need to smile. You know, we worked on that. His next demo, he got 30 recs. He got 30 recs. He got 20 recs. And by the way, he was he was crushing recs the rest of the summer. He averaged uh, right around 20 recommendations per appointment. And it's just confidence in making sure, do they have their basics down so they have people to call? Because a lot of times, why, why don't they do more appointments? They don't have them. Why don't they have them? Many times, they don't have anybody to call, you know? So are we making sure that they're set up properly and they always have people to call? And then obviously, it's getting them great. I want to make sure that Number one, the first thing my guys know that they need to master is recommendations. They need to be freaking phenomenal at that. I don't care if they suck at selling. They have a lot of people to see. They're going to stick around. I'm going to get them good. The second thing they need to get great at is the phones. They need to be super confident on the phones. Are they phoning in front of you? Are you making them great? All right, so they can get appointments set up and they're not burning through all their leads. So are you getting them confident on the phone? And the third thing you get them great at is closing. Too many managers make the mistake of focusing on closing first, and you're not going to develop a long-term sales rep. You're not going to have the layers you need to drive the big sales weeks that you want to have. So I think that's really important that that gets done. So once the plan's in place, our job is to make sure that we hold them accountable to it and we make sure that it's happening. So I'm going to go through this real quick, but PCs, PDI, you know, is that happening uh, every day? I talked to them last night, just making sure you know the days they're working, that's when they need to check in. What's the day they're working? They're making calls that day, they had planned on making calls, uh, or it was a day that they were planning on doing demos, right? So they need to check in those days. Uh, the other days I just shoot them a text, hey, happy studying, good luck on your test, you know, whatever it is. You should know what your people's schedule is and what's happening with them. Buddy system, I love buddy system, and so doing this, you can do it two ways. Uh, it can be with people who have similar goals to them, matching them up so they like hold each other accountable and they push each other. Uh, or they can be mentorships. Anytime you can, that's always great. Or someone more experienced is buddied up with someone newer to help them develop and gain confidence in the job. Uh, a, a big thing, weekly evaluations. Do you actually look at their numbers and what held them back? Uh, you need to actually dive into that. It will not get better if you don't know where the holes are, if you don't know the areas of opportunity. So making sure that when the week finishes, you look at what went well, what could have gone better. Why? What went well? We want to repeat it. What could have gone better? We want to make sure what it is so we can fix it and they don't keep making the same mistakes over and over. So make sure that your staff and yourself, that you're looking and diving in with people and looking, does this person what do they need to do to stay on track for their personal goal? Their goal means they need to sell $13.50 per week. Well, if they need to sell $13.50, you know, where do we need to adjust? Do we need to add a couple demos this week? Sometimes we need to get them thinking a little bit bigger, right? Uh, or they'll do four demos and sold $1,500. And I'm like, hey, imagine if you had completed seven. Like, how big could this campaign be if you were completing that? And making sure we're driving them to that demo number. Uh, I would jot that down. It's all about completing the demos, you know? Like, are you driving the demo number? Uh, with my heavy hitters, when we make plans, we, we break down the numbers based on the averages and everything, but then it comes down to, here's the demo number. That's what we got to commit to. And every week, it's just driving that demo number because you don't want them just focus on the sale. You know, if the first day they sell a complete set, then they don't work the rest of the week. I'm like, hey, are you committed to seven demos per week? Okay, awesome. You know, I'm like, hey, that's, that's a great start to the week. We got six more to go. How big could this week be? And making sure that we're painting vision for that when we're with them. Our company does an absolutely incredible job providing so many tools to help us drive sales, push contests, milestones, Rolexes, trips, scholarships, team builder scholarships. Use them. 
You know, so many people know the power of the newsletter. Drew's given a million talks on it. Uh, if you haven't heard one, go on back to your Connect, new managers, and listen to teaching through the newsletter or metrics or I don't know, there's like a million of them. But even though people have heard them and know about the power of utilizing just driving the amount of people to the newsletter, uh, they still don't use them. Uh, so I'm not going to cover details on how to use these tools, but I do want to share before I wrap up, three main focuses I found as a manager that really impact our report, okay? Uh, and the first one is top 20% manager uh, management. Regardless of the size of your team, I believe every manager can drive 10 to 20 people every week, like by yourself, like you can handle 10 to 20, all right? And guys, at a minimum, can you be driving your top five reps to the newsletter and your assistant manager team, cool? At a minimum. And if you just focus on that, if you have five reps from your team you're getting to the newsletter and then your staff that you're getting to the newsletter, well guys, that's a $10,000 plus report uh, every single week. So making sure you're focused on that. So you don't need to talk necessarily to 30, 40 people. I think that's sometimes where you can get overwhelmed as a manager, but really knowing who are my focused people for that, who are my 10. And I encourage you to do 10 plus staff. I think 10 to 20 uh, is a sweet spot for driving big sales weeks. But again, at a bare minimum, are you driving your staff and your top five reps to get on that newsletter every week? Do you utilize mini teams? By the way, I'll tell you right now, I do not run mini teams. Uh, I never did before uh, how you, I mean, people have all versions of it. I never ran it how Drew runs it or we run different, we ran different programs and we competed for years. I haven't ran te mini teams in a while and I'm bringing it back because I just, I know the powers. I wrote this talk, I'm like, gosh, that was something that always helped us drive huge reports. And, and by the way, I didn't give them all the PDI. I was still wanted to talk to my key people, myself and my couple lead assistants did most of the PDI, but the mini teams were phenomenal for competition you know, for energy. Like these new team leaders and new managers, like they bring so much energy, right, to your people. And they're like, we got to kick Carly's ass. And I'm like, oh my God. You know, but they get like super intense with each other. And like, dude, I'm going to, you know, and they just, they make it fun. They have fun with it. They own it. And they really drive their people at a much higher level. So, even if it's just for that, give them ownership, let them have fun, spark competition. And lastly, are you driving your groups? I recommend splitting your team into five main groups, okay? And the first one are your assistant managers. So for those who have not heard Lloyd speak about this, Lloyd Reagan, over and over and over, full staff, 7 a.m.s. Do you have 7 a.m.s? Get 7 a.m.s on staff. How soon can you have 7 a.m.s? Uh, because that, that, just them going out and doing three to five demos a week and taking people field training is huge for your sales report. So are you driving your assistant managers? Are you fully staffed? And then are you driving them properly? Key staff, all right? With your key staff, you want to be talking about consistency, all right? Earning leadership position. Key staff only contests. Those are things you guys can do with them. And, and someone asked me about staff meetings and, and even in key staff. When we go through key staff, it's real quick. Go around the horn. Hey, what went well last week? What could have gone better? And they share, you know, what's their goal for this week? Uh, we go through whatever the areas of opportunity. Uh, we give some keys on. Uh, give five to seven minutes on something motivational, something you read from a book, something that you heard, share that with them, and then set up a contest based on what their goals are for that week. You're like, all right, cool. So your guys' goal added together adds up to 17,000. So if you guys hit that, the next week at team night, I'm buying, you know, I'm paying for bowling. I'm buying appetizers. I'm doing whatever. By the way, I have seen my key staff hit their number two times in 10 years. So, you know, all right, they, but it's like what they're like, I want to sell 3K. Like they never do it. But I'm like, okay, all right. I get all their total and I put it on the board and I'm like, all right, your guys' goal is 20, you know, whatever. And if they do it, that's a great problem. Pay for their bowling, you know. And so uh, it's great. But doing contests, that's just for them. Uh, they absolutely love it. Uh, days one through three, making sure they're getting off to a fast start. How many promotions could they hear for their first weekend? That's what we're driving. Days four through 10, it's all about finishing fast start strong. Anything can happen. Vision for the second half of fast start. Benefits of doubling pay, 25%, dirty 30. And then guys with the team, get them on the boards. Can you get an order? Uh, not just as an office, uh, not just getting on the boards at the office with one order, which our goal is everybody gets an order every week, uh, but how cool would it be to get onto the newsletter, uh, consistency club, five to seven demos per week. And guys, it's only when we start focusing on helping our people get what they want and need versus focusing on hitting our goals that we're going to take our organization to where we want them to go. So define your success. Help others identify theirs. 
Create a routine around your habits and theirs. Make sure to have proper accountability and stop looking at success as a distant achievement. I'll leave you all with a quote that a friend had posted. I'd seen it on Facebook uh, from a book and I loved it. And it says, when you focus on developing people rather than chasing achievement, you will discover personal fulfillment. But more than that, you will plant seeds of significance in the lives of others. I hope this assists you guys in rocking your revolution to improving your relationships, recruiting, and results.